So a couple of months ago, after running Debian GNU Linux on my home server for the last five years, I decided I'd just had enough and migrated it to Windows Server 2012. I didn't want to lose any of the files or virtual machine hard disks or any of my projects, and I didn't have enough external space to, to back it all up before installing a new operating system. So I actually did it by repartitioning the drive and then slowly migrating files across. So that was on my, on my server, and it was interesting enough that I decided I wanted to do it again with a virtual machine and actually record it. So as crazy as it sounds, this is how you get rid of Debian GNU Linux and migrate to server 2012. So this is my virtual machine. It's running in Hyper-V and it's called Tomato. And taking the place of all of my original files or all of my the all of the files I wanted from my home server is this placeholder, the very important foo.txt. Okay, so what do I do? I need to resize the ext3 partition to make room for the Windows 2012 partition. And I've got a 50 gig virtual drive. And to resize it, I'm going to use a tool called gparted, which is included in the Nopix Live CD. Nopix is a CD bootable version of Linux that you can use to it's really a full operating system on itself, but it includes a tool for uh, managing partitions. So I've already attached it, so all I'm going to do is restart the machine. I didn't see any point in making you watch a Linux system boot up. I'm just going to dismiss this warning about an out-of-date version of X screensaver. And I get the Nopix desktop. A cool looking blue flame and legacy green console text show us just how elite we are for using Linux. And because most Linux distros seem utterly incapable of coming up with a meaningful user interface, graphical user interface, I'm actually going to have to open a command prompt, elevate to an administrative prompt, and then I can run gparted. gparted is just a graphical front end based on the GTK framework for the parted tool, which will actually be doing the heavy lifting in the background. If the interface looks familiar, it should. It's basically been lifted from partition magic. I'm going to put 40 gigs out in front. I'm going to get a warning that the boot sector may be wiped out. I don't plan on dual booting, so I don't care. Just click OK. And click Apply. Okay, so again, I didn't see any point in recording a progress indicator marching to 100%. But here it is. The volume's been resized. So well, the next thing I'm going to do is actually attach my Windows 2012 ISO. So I'm booting off of the Windows Server 2012 R2 ISO. If you've ever installed Windows before, this will all look very familiar. 
and if you haven't I'm sure there are a thousand and one videos explaining how to install Windows Server. It's actually a lot easier than Debian. I had to do a Debian install on Tomato to get it ready for Windows and it was answer a few questions, wait a while, answer a few more questions, wait a while. With Windows it's all up front. I'll just pick my language and region options, hit install. And the only reason I'm here at all is I just want to show you what the disks look like to the Windows installer now that they've been resized by parted. And so if I look at the disk now, here's the 40 gigs I carved out at the start of the drive. This is what's left of the ext3 partition, and this is my old Linux swap partition. So I'm just going to take that 40 gigs. And that's it. There's nothing else to see. Windows is going to uh, copy the the image and decompress it onto the drive and then reboot. So when it's done I'll come back and show you what I did to mount the ext3 volume, copy my files off it, and then reclaim the space. Okay, I've installed Windows and logged in for the first time. And the first thing I do on any new system is install Chocolatey which, if you don't know, is a package manager for Windows, kind of like apt is for Debian. Now I use Chocolatey to install the ext2 FSD package. Now, ext2 FSD is a full file system driver for mounting ext volumes in Windows. There are other tools that will let you browse volume, copy files in and out, but this is a native driver that lets you mount it just like any other any other partition and assign it a drive letter. Right, so now that it's installed, just fire up computer management really quick. So Windows sees the other partitions, but it doesn't know what to do with them. That's why I have to use ext2 FSD. So I've mounted the ext3 volume as the E drive. It's not really necessary, but you can mount it in read-write mode. So now if I go to my computer, there's the E drive. And there's my very important foo.txt, which I'll copy over to my Windows desktop. It's kind of pointless, but you get the idea. And so with that out of the way, I'll unmount the volume. Back in computer management, the only thing that I can do with it is delete it. And since I don't care, that's what I'm going to do. When I did this on, on my home server, on Silo, I actually had to do it a couple of times, going back and forth, moving files over to Windows, and then 
using parted to reclaim space and then expanding my windows partition into it. And that's it. The last thing I'll do is extend the C drive to take up the space. Then it's done. Debian GNU Linux is removed. Server 2012 took its place and I was able to preserve my very important foo.txt. So there are two things that didn't come up here. One is certain characters are reserved in Windows but not in the Linux file systems. So for example Windows won't let you put dollar signs in file names I think or some some characters anyway when copying those files across uh, Windows Explorer was smart about it and just told me hey I can't copy these files what do you want to do for me they were temp files so I skipped them I didn't care the other thing that I didn't that I didn't encounter so I really don't know what happens is in in Linux foo.txt and capital foo.txt are legitimately separate files but in Windows it would be counted as a duplicate file so Linux is case sensitive and Windows is not I don't know what happens probably it just complains that the file already exists and asks you to uh, if you want to overwrite it so you'll need to keep an eye out for that so that's it for my demo um, if you decide you're going to go through with it I congratulate you and wish you the best of luck in moving off of Linux and back onto Windows